Great. So you just finished reading this document here. It explains how to create modules and queue them up within a task. In this particular examples, we are looking both at C modules and C++ modules. And the goal of this little video is just quickly to give some highlights, cover some takeaway messages, but also give a little more information about these modules and where to find them on our web interface. So if we scroll down, let's go down to the lines which actually create modules. And we'll start with the easier one. C++ modules are just classes. So in Python, to create an instance of that, we just have to stamp out an instance of that class. So that becomes pretty straightforward. We include up here a particular C++ module, which typically comes either from simulation or flight software, and then you stamp out the object itself. Each module should have a tag, and that is defined directly on the handle for the C++ object. The C modules are a little bit different because they don't have classes, there's no class variables. So instead of having class variables embedded, we have to recreate this somewhat with C. And the way we did this is we have structures called configuration structures for the module, which contain all the variables that normally would be inside the class where you'd have public and private. But in C, there's no concept of public and private. So it's just variables within a structure. So it's a two-step process. The first one is to create, stamp out a copy of the structure, which is zeroed by SWIG when it gets created. So all the variables will be zero. And then we have to wrap this structure with a C++ interface. So we can call self-initializations, we can call resetting, we can call update routines and so forth on that. And the code under the hood will magically provide it the right configuration um, copy uh, for, for per each module. And then the model tag is actually at a variable of the C++ wrapped version of the C message. So this is like three lines versus two lines. That's about the biggest difference there. The other takeaways is adding them. If you're adding a C message, you have to give it the, the task you're adding it. That's the first one, the dynamics task. The second argument here then is the wrapped version of the C++ message. And then we also need to provide it a copy of the structure or a link to the structure that defines the configuration data set of this module. If you're doing a C++ module, we just have to write you know, the task that you're adding it to and the module, that's the minimum. Optionally, if you wanna add priority, there is no payload to provide. There's no you know, configuration structure for a C++ object, so that's just none. And then you add the priority. So with these priorities, the first one here has no priority. So you, you should now hopefully remember the priority will be minus one, which means it gets executed in the order it was added after all the modules who have priority. This module has the highest priority of 10, so it will be executed first. This has the second highest priority, five, it'll be executed second. And then of course, the first one will be last. That'll give us the two, three, one sequence and when you execute it, you we go back to the bottom. You should see this kind of a sequence here where module two, then three, then one gets executed. Cool, so this, this describes all that and goes into a little more details. But now that we're adding modules in all these little tutorials, these quick start tutorials, we're talking about very simple prototypical dummy modules that have just some enough of an interface so we can kind of glue them together and show how to do it. None of them actually do anything useful. So how do you find information about useful modules? Well, we go back to our documentation and you will find one section here called documentation. And the two that you wanna focus on is flight software algorithms and simulation. Flight software algorithm will contain primarily C code. There is some C++ modules, just a handful though. Most of them are C code that we wrote. And then you can see, for example, attitude control. I can look at MRP feedback. And you know, if you click on it, you'll get a whole interface and you will see what the input messages are. Solid lines means required, dashed is optional, what the output messages are. You can see them described. You can click if to type this guidance in message. What is this message? You can click on it and you can quickly read up what it's doing. So there's a lot of useful information right here. And so you can kind of go by category and figure out what modules are there. 
There's also simulation ones. This has to do with the physics. So if we go here and we wanted to look at something, we could uh, go look at power. I want to see a simple battery and uh, it'll explain to me what the simple battery is. And this one doesn't have any base messages, but it has um, a base class. So you can actually pull that one up too. And it explains what the primary message is on. So just kind of looking through these, this is a very handy place to kind of see incrementally what each module is and what might be useful for your simulation. Another place that's actually quite good as part of the quick start is we're going through all these um, very prototypical steps, processes, tasks, making a module and so forth. But you can also go look at these integrated tests that are in example scripts. These will then run a whole variety of stuff like you know how do I create a basic orbit? How do I actually do some spacecraft like stuff? So these example scripts are very, very useful. I do encourage you to read those first, but then the other documentation shows you all the modules that may not be included in some example scripts, but you can find them there. Okay, so that's kind of a quick summary of what we did in this tutorial and uh, where you can find more information on these modules. <laughs>